Yep. So a recap of the game the other night. Um, MVPs from the game. Uh, Daquan Finn I thought was outstanding. You know, a quarterback, uh, very efficient first half. Um, was able to take some short fields and turn those into touchdowns. And did a really good job of extending some plays with his legs. Um, also did a really good job of extending some plays where he got out of the pocket, threatened the line of scrimmage, and made some really key throws down the field. So um, really trusted his guys in the passing game. And you know, Eastern was going to make it really hard to run on it. Uh, run on that defense, and uh, we had to respond with some good passing yards, and he was able to do that. So uh, he was our guy on offense. I thought Chris McDonald has been really, really outstanding on defense throughout the entire course of the season here. And um, you know, another great game for him. A couple pass breakups. Um, did a couple did a really nice job. You know, on a, on a fit on a crack replace, where he came up and made a tackle near the line of scrimmage. And really, our corners all year long have been really, really good. Um, you know, Quinion gets a lot of the attention, and rightfully so, because he's such a great player. But, you know, some of those other guys have stepped up in key moments, and Chris has been, you know, doing a really good job also. So, um, and then in special teams, you know, I think our returns, uh, Devin Maddox is a big punt return um, at the beginning of the year in the first quarter there. It gave us a short field, and we were able to score a touchdown off of that. Uh, he was our MVP on special teams, you know, from his from his responsibilities and punt returns. So, uh, those guys I thought were highlighted. Um, some other guys I thought had really, really good games, um, you know, and. As we progress on here, turning our page to, you know, to the team down south. I mean, obviously, we need uh, those individual type efforts to to be successful in, in this football game. So, uh, looking forward to having a good short week of practice here and and getting ready to prepare to play the game. What kind of challenges does the short week present, especially with the team back from injury wise, health wise, like you mentioned from the game the other night? Yeah, I mean, we're we're in we're in November football here, and you never expect to have a fully healthy team at this point in time of the season. So. You know, you go to the staff meeting every morning, and you you, you wait for the, the Grim Reaper to bring the bring the news of what's bad, and you know, in, in the world of the training room. But uh, no, I say that lightly because our I mean our our sports medicine staff has been unbelievable. Um, Adam Bart, our trainer, is awesome. You know, and uh, you know, at a place like this, you you know, you got to you got to wear a lot of hats as an athletic trainer. So those guys have done a great job of you know him and his staff of getting our guys the best you know the best attention that they possibly can get and getting them ready to go. Um, you know, obviously in a short week, the schedule does provide some challenges just because you're crunched for time. Um, you know, so guys got to work a little harder at it and the, and the training staff's got to do a little bit more and a little bit extra, which they're, they're always willing and, and, and ready and able to do. So, uh, but I give our, our docs and our medical staff a lot of credit, our training staff a lot of credit to getting our guys ready to go. Uh, I think Jeremiah is going to be out for a little bit of time here. I don't know the extent of that MRI today, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Well, you strive for balance offensively. We always have, and you know we want to run the ball. We want to set the table that way, and we want to you know build great play action passes off the running game, and then you know kind of take it from there. But. Um, yeah, I think that you one of those take what the defense is giving you type of things and, you know, try to do the best job you can to, to expose what you feel are weaknesses. And the other night we were able to do that. And um, but that's not going to be the case every week. That could be something different this week. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, between myself, uh, Paul probably, um, J Bo, our equipment guy. I mean, there's not too many of us in this building that have been here as long, you know, as long as I have. When it comes to how many times to going through this week and this prep and this routine, and you know, I feel like it's, you know, it's on schedule, right? You you, and you say the same things each and every year, but you say those things because they're they've impacted you in some type of way. So the game obviously affects so many people in our community. Uh, it's you know obviously really important to you know to both to both you know. You know, the city of Toledo to Bowling Green to, you know, like I said, Lucas County, Northwest Ohio. And, and really, I mean, I think it's a it's a branded game nationally to where people really pay attention to it. Obviously, being in a midweek setting to what it is, it's the entire country gets to watch you play. Uh, so, you know, I've lived it, you know, in multiple different roles on, on this coaching staff from being the head coach down to an assistant. And, um, you know, each one of the games has had its own different identity. It's had its own different turns and twists that you scratch your head and, and did that just happen type of moments. So, uh, but that's what makes college football so interesting. As a veteran team, does that help with the emotion, the, what the rivalry is, especially coming off of last year where the game kind of ended a favorable way and helped lend you in the loss? 
Well, I mean, you know, we're very process driven here. We're very day to day, what our day to day routine looks like and what that look, you know, where you, where do you put the energy that's provided to you each and every day? And, um, you know, I think in, in college athletics, that's a, you know, that's something that's got to be talked about consistently. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, who the opponent is, uh, whether that's a, uh, you know, a power five opponent each week, it's, uh, you know, it's a bowl game, it's a MAC championship game, it's, you know, this rivalry game. Your routine doesn't change. Your thought process and where your energy needs to be uh, channeled to doesn't change. But obviously, you know, um, you know, sometimes life is, you know, is a great teacher of, of, of things and you have to pay attention to what you've, what your past experiences are and you got to learn from them. And, you know, last year's game probably, I hope, taught us a lot of stuff and, and we'll see if, it, if we learn from it. Yeah, I mean, they've been great at taking the football away. Um, you know, number one in our league, I believe, in turnover margin. Um, you know, and they've had some great defensive performances that have been aided by taking the football away. And, you know, I was just in this discussion the other day with somebody. I think that, you know, 15 years ago, you were you were celebrated as a, if you were a safety that took somebody's head off, a defenseless receiver's head off coming across the middle. and. Now you're viewed as a criminal if you do that. So, you know, how defensive football is taught and how, uh, you know, uh, the attention to, to the ball rather than making a big hit or making a, you know, a highlight type play uh, and, and what the focus is, has really changed the thought process of how these defensive coaches uh, coach it. And you can tell as you watch the tape that those guys have put a lot of emphasis in that and they've, they've aided from that and benefited from that. Well, I mean, I think it's complementary defense, right? I mean, I think they've got good edge players that, that, that can disrupt and affect uh, the QB, but also I think they've done a good job covering for long enough to create pressures. And, you know, they, they, they do enough to, to, to blitz into, into, into disguise to confuse you, but I think also they're able to create pressures and uh, hurries on the quarterback from their base personnel and, and I think that in their base, in their base looks. And when you can do that, um, you know, you you can keep the you can stay balanced. You can feel like you're playing really good fundamental defense, and and you can still create those havoc type plays. Man, that's that's tough on an offense. On the other side of the ball, you know, you talked about the injuries that have impacted your team. They've been running a bunch of different quarterbacks. Now they're running back or removed with a bunch of different personnel. Does that add challenges for how the team prepares this week? Well, I mean, you know, I, I again, injuries are part of football. I mean, you got to do the best job of preparing for what you think is available to you and you got to watch the videotape and, and and take off the tape what you uh, what you see um, you know they they have a good they have a good offensive staff they'll put a good plan together to try to attack us I'm sure uh, and you know we got to play sound football and do do what we do best and, and that's just make sure our cleats are in the ground and our eyes are in the right place and and play disciplined um, you know I, I would say the two running backs that, that you're mentioning are tremendous players I think they have great contact balance um, you know, really good with the football in their hands and are, you know, real threats out of the backfield catching it. So, you know, those two guys are a problem. You know, when they're in there, you gotta you got to do a great job of knowing where those guys are at all, at all times. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's in your face. No matter wherever you go, you know what I mean. You're you're always going to hear about you know you, you're at a gas station, you're you're filling your car up with gas. There's a guy next to you with a Bowling Green hoodie on, and there's a guy at the register with a Toledo polo on. I mean, uh, you know, it's just what it is. It's it's just the where where the location of the two places are. Um, so there's a lot of crossover, a lot of coaches that you know, a lot of you know, uh, you know these guys are recruited by both schools. Uh, our league is naturally a bus league by by nature, so. You know, that, that turns up in a lot of games. And, you know, uh, again, like I said before, we, we know what this means in Northwest Ohio, what it means to both institutions. And, uh, but I also think in here inside these walls, I mean, you know, this game, along with all the other ones we've played, are very, very important to us. And um, as long as we understand in the magnitude of what that looks like and the energy required to make it, uh, the product become what we want it to become, you know, that's, that's where our focus needs to be. You have to probably ask their mother about that, um, but uh, no. I mean, I think we, you know, that that was, 
you know, that's we experienced that through the recruiting process, you know, with Grant, and uh, you know, we yeah, that's that's probably very unique, and uh, you know, tremendous family, both great kids, um, very diligent in their work and 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 self-made how they approach their their day-to-day -day routine. So, you know, I know they wear different jerseys, but you know, those two boys are product of great parenting, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure this will be a fun experience for that whole family. I don't know if it's different. We'll find out. Is there something that characteristic about this team that you think is different or improved from last year? Uh, I mean, I just I would go back to like I said, life's I mean, life lessons are, are, are you know, that's our greatest teacher. You know what I mean? So we we want to learn from our experiences from last year. Obviously, we didn't handle the end of the season great last year, and um, you know we'll we'll see you know, if we learned anything from that. You know, we're we're in a similar situation. Uh, you know, I think. You know, uh, if you were at our press conference after the game the other night, I think a couple of the players came up here and, and said, I think, exactly what it is. I mean, yeah, we clinched the West, but we haven't won anything. You know, we haven't, we haven't done anything yet. So uh, what we've talked about back in January and February, there's, that's all out in front of us still, and that still has to be claimed and has to be uh, taken, and no one's giving you that. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not making light of your question, but like I said, I don't, I don't know if it's any different. We're going to find out if it is, and uh, we're going to find out if our work and our time and our energy has been spent in the right place to, to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it's uh, that's the first thing, you know, ever, you know, as a fan or as a, uh, as an outsider, you know, the, when you pick up a schedule and you see, that's the first thing you guys see is like, oh, this great game is going to be this. I, I don't. I look at it and say, man, I'm not going to sleep that night. I'm not going to get home until 6 a.m. on that one. Um, we got to go there and do what? Uh, so, yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, it's a, uh, it's. You know, you see these Tuesday night, Wednesday night uh, games, and you kind of feel for the opposing coaches on what they're, what's going to happen, and how how their week is going to go, uh, all over our league. But it's part of it. You know, we've we've uh, we've put ourselves in a situation where we've bought into this midweek, uh, these midweek games. We can't, you know, brag and claim the good and 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 not understand there's some bad that's going to go along with it. So that's part of it. We accept it and and keep rolling. But. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some sleepless nights. There's some nights, yeah, you got to sleep in your office. There's some nights that you got to uh, – there's some days where, you, you, man, oh, man, you look at the clock and you're like, oh, how did it get to be whatever time it is today? So, uh, But I, I think you understand that when you get into this profession, there's going to be some of that. Fast forward like 10 years, and you know, just like back on TV, it used to, you know, fly to a win or come in as coach. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about this coach? Um – I just think that's it's pure. I mean, it's what college football is all about. I mean, it's just you know, uh, you know, it has the feel of a high school robbery in a sense that it's so close. Um, the communities are intermixed, and there, you know, there's again, it's 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 in your face. It's not, it's hard to avoid. So, um, I think a lot of respect for that program. You know what they've been able to accomplish. Um, you know, I would I would imagine that you know that would be the same thought process as, as what they'd say about us. Um, you know, and I think that. Yeah, that's what makes the rivalry so great, you know, and uh, a lot goes into the game, a lot goes into the preparation, but a lot goes into, you know, uh, like I said, you, you're eating lunch and somebody's next to you with a Bowling Green hat on and he knows you're the football coach and he's looking at you weird and, you, you know, there's you want to say something and you can just, you can say it, you know what I mean, and that type of feeling. So, uh, you know, it's interesting that way in a sense it has a high school feel, but it also has the magnitude of a, it's going to be a national stage and the game's going to be on national TV, so the whole world gets to see our program gets to see their program and get really gets to see what the how much energy Northwest Ohio puts into the game, which I think is really cool. Uh, I think all quarterbacks go through a maturation process that, 
you know, uh, if it looks the same when they're a junior or senior as it did when they were a freshman, we're not we're not getting things accomplished what need to get accomplished. So, uh, you know, you can do as good as you can and put the most elaborate plan together of trying to simulate scenarios and situations through spring football practice, through summer practices, through preseason practices, but you cannot simulate game day. So um, you can sit, you know, if you're a baseball player, you can sit in the batting cage for hours, but you cannot simulate a 100 mile an hour fastball coming high and tight. And sometimes when you play quarterback, it's high and tight a lot. So, uh, you know, you have to react and move on the fly. You have to make quick, you know, decisions uh, on call. There's not a lot of thought process that goes into that. Um, you have to be a great decision maker before you get the football in your hands from the center. And once it's in your hands, you have to be a great reactionary player. And I think that evolves over time. So uh, you're seeing things in a third year as a starter now, or two and a half years as a starter that you didn't see when he was a first year starter. And um, that's a testament to his growth. That's a testament to his preparation and what he puts into it. Um, at quarterback, I think you're viewed differently. You know, it's the most scrutinized position in sport. You don't you know, it could be not your fault that you're going to get blamed. Um, it could be, you know, you couldn't be there. You could be the reason why you could not be the reason why you won the game and you're going to get the credit. So you have to there's a balance of humility that has to be uh, in you. And uh, I think he has that. I think he's demonstrated that over time uh, and he has a good process. And if he keeps buying into that, he'll play really, really good. But anything that deviates from that process, he's probably not going to play good. So uh, he understands that. And, you know, that's what it's like for every quarterback. Well, I mean, first team meeting, you're guaranteed to play 12 games, and we're trying to play 14. Well, we've we've secured 14 of them, so we're going to play in 14 this year. And um, you know, now that that's one box that you can check and you can take off the off the table. Now, what's what's left? I mean, the same in the same breath, you said you wanted to win all your football games. Well, that's still a reality too. Uh, and in the same breath, you said you wanted to win and beat your rival. That's a reality too. So, um, what? The opportunities that have been provided to us have been provided to us by a really good process. It's been provided to us by really uh, sound, diligent work over a long course of time. And uh, man, oh man, we'd be a fool now to disregard that and, and, and cut that off. That's got to continue and got to continue at a, at a high level and maybe even, a, even at a higher level than maybe it's been. I mean, the, the climb up the mountain, the, 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 the hardest part is the peak. I mean, it's not, it's rare air up there. You got to, uh, the separation factor, the margin for error is very, very small. So uh, we understand that. We understand that you got to, you know, having great days matter more now than they than they do back in January and February and Jan and June and July and August and uh, you know. And we've earned that. We've prepared. We've we've put, we've we've put ourselves in this position. So let's capitalize on it.